this is the head honcho from Ride Engineering, and we want to show you guys our 2016 Husky FC450. For those of you guys that don't know, this bike is basically a white KTM. The major changes are just a composite airbox and restricted Eurospec muffler. So in other words, all the changes we're making to our bike is going to work if you have a 16 KTM SX. Our bike came from Motorsport Motorcycles up in the Pacific Northwest. So we imported a rider from that same area. His name is Tommy Week. He's a pro and he's also started his own training facility. This 2016 Husky is a very good bike. Handles great, stops good, but the suspension out of the box is probably its Achilles heel. We took our bike to Shock Therapy in Brea, California. They went ahead and installed some valves in the bottom of the fork to make both bottom compression. And then the upper dials, we have the red one, which is purely rebound. And then the white dial is rebound, but it also has a bleed. So it also will affect your compression just a little bit. Then out back, we had to go with the softer shock spring. We went with the Ride Engineering Link and we put a KYB piston to flow more oil. Okay, let's move on to the triple clamps. We didn't change the offset because again, I think this bike handles great. I don't like this, the design of the bar mounts. The stock ones are very easy to bend. We use a Japanese bar mount system. So our bar mount stays on the handlebar. And if you crash, you only will bend one of these posts. And for 20 bucks, you can unscrew these and replace them. And we also have two durometers for our polycones. We use a, a soft durometer and a stiff durometer. So it's your choice on how you want to set up your bike. As long as we're at the front of the bike, we put some black braided steel brake lines on it to just to make our bike look different. But I do want to show you guys this new oversized brake rotor. This is something new from Ride Engineering. We're going to be offering these for all the brands. And we decided to go with a non-floating disc two reasons, it's less expensive and it's lighter. Pro Taper. They went ahead and sent us some handlebars. They also sent us a set of chains and sprockets for our bike. Pretty trick how the rear sprocket matches our engine cases. And then they sent us an RK lightweight chain. This chain is six ounces lighter than the factory chain. Staying on the back of the bike, I want to talk to you a little bit about our axle and axle block kit. This is something unique from Ride Engineering. We use our own axle blocks, which have little serrations on them to make it easier for you to adjust your chain. But we combine that with a Honda axle. The reason we do that is we want the left axle block to not be attached to the axle like the factory one is. We want it to float. So on our bike, we added an FMF exhaust system. The system took almost three pounds off our bike. SDG built us this great seat and we love that because it's kind of hard to hold on to these 450s with 60 horsepower. And then Flu Designs went ahead and created this custom graphic kit for us so we could highlight all our sponsors. Last but not least, I just want to show you this steering head stabilizer bracket assembly. And rather than me tell you how this works, we're just going to let our test rider tell you how it works. We had him ride the bike all day with it and then the last two laps we took it off. Animals, chemicals, and makeup. We took the steering stabilizer after I'd ridden all day with that uh, on. And right away, as soon as we pulled it off, I was immediately uncomfortable. Corners are the fast straightaways. It was very inconsistent. It was always kind of shuffling me around and I couldn't get it to hold the same line as I could when I had it on. The comfort that it gave me and the confidence was a, a surprising thing to me. I wouldn't think something like that would be a, as big of a benefit as it was. I was very impressed with that. That was probably one of the biggest things I was impressed with. Right away I was very impressed with the uh, ability of the feeling, how the stability of the bike was coming into corners. I was very planted and secured feeling. You get it to want to ride in the lower part of the stroke and uh, I was able to overcome that with a couple quick adjustments. Braking power was very, very progressive. Coming down into the long sweeper corners we were able to really hold our standing positions. I could literally just put the bike wherever I wanted. It made no difference. One of the things that uh, some of my friends have definitely mentioned on the Husqvarna's, the front forks, having a metal clank on the ending of the stroke. And that was something that definitely the shock therapy upgrades on the front fork, this right step in the direction to have a, a better feel and having that progressive feel and not getting that same bottoming resistance was nice. Uh, it makes the bike balance, you know, both front and rear. Not running Bridgestone pretty much my entire career. Definitely 
definitely uh, was impressed with the soft compounds coming out of the sand. The X20s hooked up. Number one complaint for any rider is being comfortable and I was able to get right on this one and, and immediately we were able to adapt and feel up the comfortability to be able to ride at our level on that bike. Just so